This lecture will give an overview of the lunar niches, their aspects of the goddess Kali and Lalita, and welcome to the course. My name is Naya Petrinos and I've been practicing yoga and studying yoga philosophy since 1997. I'm presenting to you in this course my unique take on the Kali and Lalita niches. My work is influenced by Laura Amazzoni, Mike McGee, David Frawley, Uma Dinsmore Tolley, Maya Tawari, Sally Kempton, David Kinsley, and Joseph LePage. And I'm probably leaving some people out, but that's who I, I, I comes to mind right now. I teach a yoga class called Lunar Hatha. And this practice is one I've developed around the lunar niches. The class is devoted to whatever goddess is in the sky that night. There are different goddesses for each phase of the moon. And the class consists of variations of Pagma Muktasana 1 and 2, moon salutations, lunar asanas, and yoga nidra. We also use mudra and mantra. And I've uh, put together this e-course to expand on those practices and share them with a larger audience. And I want to say that I'm not teaching a traditional tantric practice. This is a weaving together of many things to shape the goddess for the 21st century householder. So this is a post lineage practice. And I'm very honored to share it with you. So we need to begin. And getting started can be difficult for some people. And I'd like to share this quote from Araya Mountain Dreamer from a book I love called What We Ache For. I accept that I may always find within myself some inexplicable reluctance to begin a process I fundamentally find rewarding. We have to let go of our ideas about ideal conditions if we're going to start. Step over the overflowing laundry basket. Leave the breakfast dishes piled in the sink. Ignore the flashing light that tells you there are telephone messages or emails to be answered and cling to your commitment to begin this day. And I offer that because it's hard to start. There are a lot of practices in this course that might feel overwhelming. But all you need to do is start. Just start. Step over the overflowing laundry basket. Leave the breakfast dishes piled in the sink. Ignore the flashing light that tells you there are telephone messages or emails to be answered and cling to your commitment to begin this day. So, so cling to your commitment now that you've enrolled in the course to do the course, to start the course. Never feel that you have to do everything. Just do what you're called to do. I want to talk to you a little bit from the work of a Kempton, some things I like she said. The goddess Shakti, Shakti is the name for the goddess, the feminine energy, appears in a multiplicity of forms. As an independent goddess, she is often given the generic name Devi or goddess but she is also worshipped by many other names. So Sally Kempton writes, the best way is to understand deity as a unique vortex of energy. Sometimes that energy vortex takes recognizable anthropomorphic form. 
for instance in meditation and visions. Sometimes that energy is felt through the sound vibrations called mantra or through the geometric pictures called yantras that map the way that energy looks in blueprint form. To learn to experience these distinct energies with their distinct powers and qualities is the invitation of awakening Shakti. Recognizing and decoding the various tastes of the goddesses is a way of deepening your capacity for living with passion and depth. It's a practice for mining your soul's connection to the cosmos. It offers a powerful means of understanding the capacities of your own psyche and it can reveal spheres of consciousness that are ordinarily beyond the range of human understanding. That really touched me because in this course we're going to look at 30 or you could say 32 goddesses. And why is that important? Sally Kempton says it very beautifully recognizing and decoding the various tastes of the goddesses is a way of deepening your capacity for living with passion and depth. We're looking for that passion and depth and we're also looking for healing, manifestation and transformation. So how do you start the course? How do you start the course? You can start the course at any time. What I find um, beneficial for me is to practice the sadhana, the, the practice of the goddess on the day that she reigns in the sky. Other teachers I've had will study one goddess at a time and that's fine you can spend some time with her a day a month a year a lifetime but what i advocate what i found helpful for myself is to get a lunar calendar one that has the new moon and the full moon on it and you can count to figure out who's in the sky and if, and if that seems too complicated you can email me to figure out what goddess is in the sky. You can look at my Facebook page, Moon Phase Goddess deck. Or you can count with your calendar. If you're using the calendar, it's important to figure out what happened the most recently, a new moon or a full moon. The new moon will always be the goddess Kamishvari. The full moon will always be Kali. So these are the basis to count. The goddess of the full moon herself can change each month depending on the calendar. So it's best to start counting the day after the full moon, full moon. And I call this a uh, full moon plus one. So that's the counting. And if it's unclear again, you can go onto my Facebook page or you can email me directly and we can get your goddess practice started. So I call this uh, Kali Lalita Sadhana. Sadhana means daily spiritual practice. It's the foundation of all spiritual endeavor. Sadhana is your personal practice, your individual spiritual effort. It's the main tool you use to work on yourself to achieve the purpose of life. And so we're doing this lunar sadhana or nitya sadhana or lalita kali nitya sadhana, whatever name resonates with you. And we're doing it for healing, transformation, and manifestation, and connect, and to connect with the true self. So this is a really healing practice. We're going to get back in touch with the cycle of the moon, get it back in touch with nature, and hence we're going to get back in touch with ourselves. So Linda Johnson from the Living Goddess uh, had ten commandments of sadhana. I thought they were kind of interesting. Here are the don'ts. Don't harm others. 
don't be dishonest, don't take anything that isn't yours, don't overindulge in sensuality, don't be greedy. And here are the do's. Do cultivate physical cleanliness, emotional purity, and mental clarity. Do be content with what your karma has brought you. Do discipline yourself. And this practice is a discipline. Do study your psychological and spiritual makeup. And that's what we're doing in this course. And do love the supreme being with your whole being. And I really love these goddesses, Lalita and Kali Nichas and all the 30 names of them. And I want to share this love and this uh, tool for transformation and manifestation and healing with you. What to expect. For each goddess, there are a series of lectures, readings, asanas, journaling practices, and a yoga nidra guided relaxation. So there's a lot offered. And you can do all of it. You can spread it out through the day. Or you can do some of it. It can be very simple. Just reading the card every day. Which has the name of the goddess and says an introduction. Or one month you can do one of the practices for each goddess. Perhaps one month you go through the course reading just the cards. The introductions, the next month you go and do the goddess talks, another month you go through and do the guided relaxations, one month maybe you do moon salutations each month, or you do the posture for each goddess. It's, it's really up to you depending on how much time you have. The introduction to the goddess at the beginning of each section is the front of my moon phase goddess cards. And on that front card, on that introduction, you get the name of the goddess, her phase of the moon, her yantra and mantra, and some advice for the day. The journaling uh, questions are a great way to explore uh, the lessons, the teachings of the goddess, and how you can relate them to yourself. So if you can at some point do the journaling questions, I think they're very helpful. And then there are a lot of other materials. One of my favorite practices is the moon salutations with mantras, so you might want to do that. Let's talk about the niches. There are 15 Lilita niches. Nitcha means eternity or goddess. And their limbs are rays of Lilita, avatars of her, aspects of her. And Lilita is herself pure consciousness without additions. And the Lilita niches themselves can be meditated upon and worshipped in different forms and colors for the attainment of different ends. And uh, in daily worship of the niches, each has her own um, nyasa ritual sequence. And they have their own pujas associated with them and their own vowel sounds and their own phase of the moon. So they're pretty extraordinary. And um, like Lalita, Kali also has 15 niches or eternities. And they're associated with the waning moon rather than the waxing moon. Lalitas are with the waxing moon, Kali's are with the waning moon. And these niches also have um, yantras and mantras and forms and colors. And um, might be an oversimplification, but um, Kali niches are, are darker and more foreboding. And Lalita niches are brighter and, and more positive, but it's not always the case. It's not so simple, and you'll see when you go through the practice. And we can find in this lunar practice that sometimes the Lalita niche is fierce, and sometimes the Kali niche is gentle. So in this Lalita Kali Sadhana, we'll look at each day of the lunar cycle as an expression of a different aspect of the goddess and therefore a different aspect of expression of ourselves because we are the goddess. 
So I put together uh, uh, this uh, cycle of the moon. And this is based on 28 days. So you can see in parentheses Chitra and Mitra who come each month. Sometimes Mitra is called Mitta. So the variations of that. But you'll see at one is Kamishvari, Bhagamalini, and these phase phases of the moon. It's quite beautiful. It's really become my life's work, this practice. It's so complex and yet very simple and beautiful. I always say to my students, don't be afraid of all the names. I mean, maybe you just saw those 30 names and it was overwhelming. My name is Naya. That's how I, I think of myself. Naya. But um, some people consider me Naya Petrinos. And if I'm being formal, I say on the phone, this is Naya Petrinos. And when I was in Cuba, uh, I was nicknamed or called Naita. Special name for me only happens uh, when I was in Cuba and one person who speaks who's Spanish speaking in uh, Los Angeles calls me that and then sometimes I'm called Mrs. Petrinos or Ms. Petrinos or Mrs. Guest. That's my um, husband's name, Guest. Um, affectionately I'm called Naya Papaya and even my husband calls me uh, Poopy because I used to and often am tired poop out. I try to do too much overload. And even though I have all these names and these names represent uh, different parts of me, a more playful me, a more formal me, the Cuban me, the married me, the true self is always the same. And that's the the lesson of the Kali and Lalita Nichas. They have all these different names, just like we have all these different names, but their true self is the same. same. And I don't know about you, but for me, every day I wake up a little different. And if you practice yoga or meditation, you may have noticed that your body is different every day. Even though the body is different every day, the true self never changes. And even Kali and Lalitza, for all their differences, they are also the same. And they sometimes even come together as one goddess called Rakta Shamunda. And there's always more layers. There's always more layers. And that's what's so fascinating about this goddess practice and any kind of self-exploration. So Nitya, let's come back to that name. The Nitya's or Eternities of Lalita represent the 15 lunar days or Tithis of the waxing moon. And each has their own Yantra, Mantra, Tantra, Prayoga, or ritual application. And the full circle of the Nitya's also represents the 21,600 breaths a human being takes in a full day and night. And such, the niches are the Kala Chakra, or the Wheel of Time. How beautiful is that? So let's talk about the cosmic breath. Every movement within creation is a breath. A breath made of three parts, referred to as the cosmic breath. There is an inhalation, a contraction. There is an exhalation, an expansion. And finally, the space between the peak of the inhalation and exhalation, or between the peak or the valley, maybe you would say, of the exhalation and the inhalation. And this is a period of transition. Our lunar cycle also mirrors or reflects the great cosmic breath. There's an interpretation that says our waning moon from full moon to new moon is the inhalation, the breath inward toward consolidation, restoration, and renewal. The waxing moon from the new moon to the full moon is the exhalation, the expansion in the world, and the presence of our light mirrored in the light of the moon. 
and both new moon and full moon are the peaks or transitions between the in and out breaths and represent the yin yang polarities in the infinite of all and the moon finds itself moving between lalita and kali and i think of lalita as the goddess of manifestation and the and Kali is the goddess of transformation. So we're moving in this cycle between manifesting and transforming every month. Kali and Lalita are, are um, two really important faces of the Divine Mother. And sometimes they're considered the two most transcendent manifestations of the great goddess. Kali is the dark, dark devouring mother who tears apart the false constructs of ego. And Lalita is the embodiment of sweetness and bliss who showers us with grace. And these two goddesses are opposite sides of the same coin, reconciling the energy of both within ourselves. And when we reconcile them, we can create an entirely new paradigm of consciousness. There's a highly diverse tradition of goddess worship in India. Kali stands at one extremity and Lalita at the other, with, with all other goddesses occupying a place somewhere between these two extremes of the spectrum. Kali represents a fierce or Ugra aspect of the divine, and Lalita represents the peaceful Shanta aspect. And while Kali is the embodiment of detachment and renunciation, Shri or Lalita personifies abundance and fulfillment. And there's this distinction even in the manner they're worshipped. Kali is best worshipped on um, the end of the lunar cycle, coming to the new moon or the new moon itself. And Lalita is worshipped um, beautifully at the full moon night and you can sing her 108 or 1008 names or, or chant them on the full moon I think it's incredible practice also the path of Kali takes one to the ultimate goal of freeing oneself from fear and human weaknesses in a very fierce, ferocious manner. And the path of Lalita takes one to that same ultimate goal by slowly unfolding the layers of ignorance that binds one to those weaknesses. So they're very, uh, they're very different, but they're very beautiful. And I've put together this chart of uh, adjectives for the waxing moon versus the waning moon. So this chart um, starts to talk to us about what sort of things we want to do in the waxing cycle versus the waning cycle. And then this keeps us in balance with nature and the true self. Here's a list of the niches. So you can look at that. And then I wanted to talk about the cycles of the moon. There's the new moon, the waxing crescent moon, the first quarter moon, the waxing gibbous moon, the full moon, the waning gibbous moon, the last quarter moon, and then the waning crescent moon. And then you come back to the new moon again. So let's look at that. So the new moon, that cycle has a few goddesses around them. Kamishvari is the, on the actual day of the new moon, but the night before and the night after um, are also that energy of the new moon. It's a good time to plant the seeds of your future dreams. The moon is between the earth and the sun, and the side of the moon facing towards us receives no direct sunlight. It is lit only by dim sunlight reflected from the earth. 
the new moon carries energy to spark clarity of purpose because the night sky is darker at this time we can easily turn inward to our own creative light so i call this sometimes the dark disk of the moon because the new moon it's dark you don't see a moon or you might see a tiny bit of light but it's pretty much dark out in the sky and that's the new moon then there's the waxing crescent moon very beautiful moon and the goddesses of the waxing crescent moon are Nichiklina, Burunda, Vani Vasini, and Vrishvari. And this is a time to think about what you want, to keep faith, to have courage, explore your dreams, allow your intentions to blossom and flourish, and don't give up before you've even started. So let's look at that shape. As the moon moves around the earth, the side we see gradually becomes more illuminated by direct sunlight. The first quarter moon is a time when we are likely to want to take action since there's a high energy level in the air. As the moon grows, so does anything we put into the world. First quarter moon. The main manifestation of that is Tavrita, but also it's the time of Shivaduti and Kulasundri. And this time is a great time to reread wish lists, let go of what you no longer care about, and to take action. So this is really with your intentions. So again, the moon is 90 degrees away from the sun in the sky and is half illuminated from our point of view. We call it the first quarter moon because the moon has traveled about a quarter of the way around the earth since the new moon and it's also because we're seeing half and the back side would be dark so it's really just a quarter we're seeing a half of a half which is a quarter waxing gibbous moon this is the moon of nitya nilapataka and vijaya and this is a time to stay on course Keep up your stamina, review your plans, go over your ideas, and recommit to good habits and routines. Waxing gibbous, the area of illumination continues to increase in the moon, and more than half of the moon's face appears to be getting sunlight. So we can see more than half, and that's the gibbous moon. Now we're at the full moon, and the names can be Sarva Mangala, Java Malini, or Chitra. Usually it's Java Malini, could be Chitra. Kali is after the full moon, but she's still in that energy. And that's Kali Nitya. It's not um, the full aspect of Kali. And it's that's a time to count your blessings, release, let go, and move on and observe what wishes have come true and forgive others and yourself. The moon is 180 degrees away from the sun and is as close as it can be to being fully illuminated by the sun from our perspective. The sun, earth, and the moon are aligned, but because the moon's orbit is not exactly in the same plane as the earth's orbit around the sun, they rarely form a perfect line. And when they do, we have a lunar eclipse as Earth's shadow crosses the moon's face. So that's kind of interesting. And now we're at the waning gibbous moon, also called the disseminating moon. It's moving away from being um, full. And her names are Kapalini, Kula, Korakula, Varodini. And this is a time to accept where you are. Don't fall into a slump. Don't start anything new, regroup, go easy on yourself and accept what is. So at this stage, more than half of the moon's face appears to be getting sunlight, but the amount is decreasing and the waning moon is a time of release. We're moving, um, we're more sensitive and aware of endings. Our energy is moving inward again towards the more yin and feminine time of the dark moon. And now we're looking at the last quarter moon, which could be Ugra, Ugra Prabha, Dipa. And this is a time to reorient yourself, not to stop or give up, let go of things that no longer serve you, make adjustments, investigate conflicts and challenges, break bad habits, and reevaluate. 
And this third quarter moon can be a time when we find ourselves feeling upside down or lost. We aren't in the potency of the full moon or the fresh start of the new moon. The third quarter moon is about reflecting and releasing, and it's a time to honor the natural rhythms of life and to go with the flow. And then we get to the waning crescent moon. Sometimes it's called the balsamic moon. I think that's very beautiful. I think because I love balsamic dressing. So um, this moon, this balsamic moon can be named uh, Nila, Ghana, Balaka, Matra, or Mudra. And this is a time to accept that what can and can't be done, to forgive, surrender, heal and soothe, and let go and move on. It's time to end relationships too that are not working. So the moon has moved another quarter of the way around the earth to the third quarter position. The sun's light is now shining on the other half of the visible face of the moon. And this is a time for closure, endings, and emotional and physical release. It's common to feel more tired, have lower energy, and need more rest. It's the best time for yin yoga, for tea. Oh my goodness, I love tea. Going to bed early and just generally being gentle with ourselves. So I think that's a really good introduction to these topics. So let's get started. Let's get started with the practice.